Assalamu alaikum. I hope everyone is well. So in those uh, series of me doing Facebook lives, I, I want to talk about mental health from Islamic or spiritual counseling and psychotherapy perspective. And one of the viewers asked me to talk about narcissism. And I like that suggestion because I actually want to talk about uh, what is actually interesting you. Assalamu alaikum, Um Fatima. I'm glad you can join. Welcome. Um, so going back to that request about narcissism, uh, I so appreciate that. Please, if any of you who's interested in Islamic counselling or uh, spiritual counselling uh, takes on uh, mental health, please post them on my Facebook. Please let me know what is it that you need help with. I'm here to help. So narcissism itself uh, has a huge, uh, very long history. Uh, it started in Greek mythology and it uh, it belonged to a story, Salam Alaikum Fatima and others. Um, uh, it started in Greek mythology when Narcissus was uh, born into a god and nymph. Uh, he, his mother, was told that her son has only a chance to live a long life if he doesn't know himself. But one day he knew himself. When he was a youngster, he looked into a pond, a water, and he seen his own reflection. In that moment, he really knew himself. And what he'd done with this knowledge, he basically tapped into his desires. Now, what I mean by desires uh, here, I used uh, Islamic counseling or spiritual or religious counseling terminology, desires. So he tapped into those desires, he fell in love in himself. And from then on, from now on, we can talk about narcissism, uh, meaning a uh, trade in ourselves that can tap into desires, uh, play on our ego um, and indulge in our own nerves. So from then on, narcissism had that meaning until 90s, uh, I would say early 90s, 30s until today, when narcissism has completely different meaning, or let's say um, bigger meaning, um, because the playing with your own ego, um, feeding on your desires is still part of being a narcissist. Now, I think it's a point for me to make a huge distinction between uh, narcissism as a trait and narcissism as a disorder. These are two different things. You see, it takes uh, a professional to actually um, diagnose somebody with disability, sorry, with a personality uh, disorder, which uh, nowadays is called narcissism. But uh, uh, what I've noticed, what you've probably noticed as well, people just use it like that nowadays. Um, anything on anyone, any trait can be called narcissistic nowadays. And I hope that this video will put a stop to it or at least make us contemplate um, and stop us before, uh, before we diagnose somebody because that's not our place to do, is it? Our place actually is different and I will talk about it as well. So what is narcissism today? Uh, it started in, nine, uh, in early 1930s. Uh, it developed until today uh, in the form of five, big five traits, personality traits. Narcissism is just one of them. We have also a personality trait which is open to experiences, to different opinions. We, we might have a personality which is agreeable. We might have personality which is narcotic. Not, uh, um, sorry, narcissism therefore is not the only one. However, there are huge spotlights put on narcissism nowadays um because because uh because we i believe as humans we like to put fingers at somebody right so those people who are having narcissistic uh, traits um diagnosis made by us uh, they um they normally um are not only negative but also they they behavior impact us in a in a very negative way right um it's not necessarily so. 
it's not necessarily so that everyone who comes your way and challenge you or challenge your behavior, your thoughts, uh, any types of developmental levels that you are in. Salam alaikum, Carolina. I'm, I'm glad you're here. It's not necessarily so that they are narcissistic. Um, they are narcissists. They are narcissists. It's not necessarily so. Um, if you think uh, 10 years back, what we've experienced uh, globally is a raise of awareness of domestic violence, domestic abuse, haven't we? And majority of the cases, it was the opposite case who was actually perpetrated. It was, it was um, going hand in hand with ever uh, growing, uh, strongly standing uh, trend of uh, feminism. Um, but nowadays, uh, decades later, we know that it's not only males who are perpetrators in relationships. Now we're changing this uh, this um, this tendency to uh, to see men in a very special, suspicious ways. We know that females they as well can be an abusers, and indeed they were. And they have potential to be so, and that's how I want you to uh, to approach those trends, those fashions in uh, in psychology, because it is just a fashion, and it's just a theory. There are different theories about personality, uh, but it's not brought to popular or pop culture attention. And uh, as I said, narcissism uh, narcissism is just one of those traits in this big five personality theory but theory in itself interesting enough and i'm sure majority of us we don't even realize salam alaikum breeze i'm glad to hear Unzabel. salam alaikum i'm so happy all of you are here please ask me questions if you want um i have my idea of what i want to talk about uh, but maybe uh, you want to you want to post some questions and i'm welcoming them so going back to the theory, it's actually based on narrative. It's actually called a lexical theory, meaning uh, it is based on how we uh, describe certain traits of our character. So people uh, who were uh, contributing to research, they were actually making different types of um, different types of self questionnaires, and it was because of those self questionnaires and how we were as a humans expressing ourselves in those in those research different those five different types of personality uh, types or traits came about to be if that makes sense right now there's plenty of criticism to any any theory and in particularly to this theory this approach to theory this hypothesis hypo, hypothesis is that it is very vague it's very generalized meaning you can't pinpoint you can't really put your hands on something concrete well i'm sure no majority of us we didn't even know that that there is criticism to it we just hear a fashion in the mental health and we just follow it but there are dangers to it and i will, will try to finish uh, this facebook live not only quickly but also uh, with a conclusion uh, and perhaps show you how dangerous it can be especially for people of faith because we have uh, somehow different instructions to deal with people than uh, a mainstream approach to mental health or pop culture uh, or capitalism uh, that is surrounding us especially for us the uh, people of faith um, living on the west so that's how I'm going to finish, but let's go back to narcissism itself. So what it is? Well, again, I've established it's a trait. We cannot diagnose, but, but also it, it is um, a certain, uh, a, it's certain um, gathering of uh, characteristics, if you like. Uh, and they're not very positive, I have to admit. So people uh, who can or have potential uh, to be an artist, they feel entitled, more entitled than anyone else. Is that kind of royalty, that kind of um, uh, gra grandiose approach to themselves, if, if that makes sense. Um, they, um, they like to be in the spotlight, they like to um, show off with what they have achieved, with who they are. Assalamu alaikum, the rest of you. Thank you for thumbs ups. Thank you for your appreciation and your time. Uh, please post the questions. Please uh, keep it as inter uh, interactive as you can. As long as I'm here, I'm here for you. 
uh, so those narcissists, they, they think of themselves as a royalty and they will expect from you to recognize them for their achievements mainly. What's interesting, those achievements, they very superficial. Again, just like I said a few seconds ago, capitalism, right? So they need to be recognized for their money. Sometimes it's for their appearance as well. Again, that's superficial. Um, they... Um, they can be very jealous, competitive, and critical. However, what's interesting about them is that they will not accept criticism from other person. Uh, in fact, um, they are very uh, inadequate or uh, unintelligent in their emotional uh, capacity, in their emotional management, self-management. They just don't understand empathy, they don't know how to connect with others. There is also with uh, for them uh, a very risky, slippery slope, if you like, um, on their self-development. Uh, meaning they can become very mischievous. And I mean in a really worst um, way mis uh, mischievous. They can um, thrive on your pain. They can also arrange, they can also arrange for a situation when you're going to feel belittled, not only by them, but by, but by others. Meaning they are backstabbers and they take um, pride in it, in a pride in it, they have kick out of it, um, and it can lead them to sadis uh, sadistic um, tendencies or behavior. So this is that slippery slope. If they don't know how to catch themselves, and majority of the cases they don't, or they won't, and I will tell you why they won't, uh, they will, uh, they will uh, uh, fall down on that scale of humanity, on that scale of moral or ethical character. They will, uh, they will, um, they will not able to progress. If that, uh, if that makes sense. So, um, do I have any questions? No, I don't. But let me see because there is a there is a new people joining oh uh, salam alaikum dua noor amina uh, rosa salam alaikum everyone um uh, yes uh, v says that that will make a uh, question your reality and this is very good point riz i completely agree you probably all uh, heard, all heard about um uh, about uh, the certain, this very special ability of um, make uh, of people making you feel um, uh, inadequate or uh, silly or forgetful. Uh, it's caused light uh, gas lightning. Um, this term uh, relates to a situation where you come to a person and say do you remember when you promised me to do that or the other and they say what do you mean by that oh, of course i did and it's it's all your fault uh, that you that you have problems with memories i would never say that what makes you think that i would ever commit to such a thing so then you 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 come to the point when you actually start asking yourself is it something wrong is that something wrong with me maybe perhaps next occasion i can record this information to prove myself not to that other person but to myself that actually i'm all right so this is that gas lighting effect and yes um narcissistic personality can easily do it salam alaikum monika i'm glad you're here please ask any questions if you if you like um so i also promise you why they won't develop themselves uh, purely because uh, if you are a therapist like myself and you work with that kind of traits uh, uh, with the person, very quickly do they realize that they have low capacity for emotional or even social intelligence. They cannot connect with another person and that makes them uh, in, um, um, incap um, in, in, incapable, incapable. But also they realize that they empty and this is a huge thing for them they realize that they empty meaning they have little to give in that arena so what's best to do what's best to do for them in that circumstances well they will show off they will tap into what we call in islamic um, cancelling ria the disease of your heart of showing up and jealousy and um, they will also because of that feeling of emptiness panic 
because they don't know what to do with it. They don't have instructions. Actually, they never had a guide. They never had a guide. They've never been surrounded by people. So sometimes it's actually a social component. Uh, they never had a person who would guide them, who would um, show them how to walk, understand, stay with their emotion, manage their emotions. They just don't know how to do it and it scares them. Um, very often narcissists, uh, narcissism uh, goes back to, um, to childhood, how you've been brought up. And you've probably seen it, I see it, it hurts my eyes. Um, so Pandela, if you, if you are into mental health, if you want into psychology, what, what will happen to you? Probably not too much. <laughs> and, and you see things through. Uh, and that's what happens to me as well. So it hurts my eyes when I see mothers um, supplementing with their children for their own uh, lack of achievement or lack of self-fulfillment or lack of self-awareness. And they sort of go around conversation with saying, my child done this, my child done the other, my child achieved that, or my child is this and, and yours not, uh, surprisingly enough. He doesn't know it, she doesn't know it, why, why your child is not this or the other. So, so you know, it, it really hurts me because I feel sorry for those mothers and fathers as well. Because little do they know about uh, Amana and their responsibility to, to, re to reflect on themselves and grow themselves and they uh, impact that, super, uh, that uh, uh, super, superficial expectations on their own children. So their own children become reflection of their own inability to self-growth, if that makes any sense. And I hope it does, because I see your thumbs up, which is great. Uh, what else can I hear from you? Do you think uh, the opposite to narcissism is empathy? It can be said so. I would say opposite to narcissism, narcissism or any negative trait of character is uh, taking responsibility and paying attention to your self-growth. You know, in, uh, in Islamic uh, counseling or psychotherapy, I, I see it as a triangle. Um, on the top of our attention, uh, I see um, a connection with the higher source, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is all God Almighty. Uh, then the second most important attention we should pay is you and you only, because it starts from you. If you think about it, nobody else is going to uh, stand on the day of judgment and tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person is this or the other. Nobody else will do it. You only carrying whatever you've done here in this world called dunya in Arabic to your next eternal stage of your life, right? So, so that's how important it is. And then on the bottom, you have relationships with others and majority of us upon and I we forget about it we become mothers we become wives we become co-workers and we forget that we have also this relationship with ourselves that will enable us to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you cannot connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your children you're doing your duty you're leaving your legacy behind but your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in your heart so I think this is the message that narcissists are alike missing uh, all right, 100%. Thank you, Riz. Um, Salam alaikum, everyone. Uh, do you feel that empathy attracts narcissists? And that's what, exactly what I want to talk about. So not only do we have to look back and reflect on our, uh, on our childhood, uh, whether narcissists were bringing us up uh, and making us believe that what is superficial, but also we have to look at our relationships, right? And narcissists, they will they will by, uh, by far uh, attract people who are agreeable, right? Because they feel comfortable with them because they are not challenged. And if you try to challenge them, if you try to criticize them, they will make their best because they're very good in linguistics to make you feel inadequate and to make yourself uh, question yourself. So you become uh, more agreeable than you normally would be. And because we're talking about Islamic counseling, I want to talk about how to deal with narcissism, but from uh, the stories in Quran. And there is no better story, no better example than Musa alayhi salam, meaning Prophet Moses himself. All right. We probably remember how he was brought up. I like to think about him that he had uh, opportunity to live in riches and the poor asylums uh, and he was uh, the he was the royalty himself 
he, uh, if you, and it's funny, I'm not diagnosing him, but he might actually struggle with personality disorder. Where am I? When I'm here, when I'm, I'm there. But subhanAllah, Allah subhanAllah has chosen him and he enabled him to go through his soul journey, through his life journey. And his life journey, all his experiences, Salam alaikum, Isabella, I'm glad you're here. Please ask me any questions that might come to you. So, uh, so Musa Sahim, he was chosen, he had he had a mission. He obviously completed that mission to surprise, to to big surprise of his surrounding and probably even himself, because that mission uh, and uh, uh, required from him um, to uh, go back to his sector that who wanted to kill him, and proclaim that he's not what he thinks he is. So who was his step that? His step that was the symbol. Uh, in uh, monotheistic religion, the symbol of the of uh, the worst criminals you can ever imagine. He was responsible for killing innocent children. He was responsible for the di for division in the uh, in the in the minority, and at that time, minority was Benu Israel, meaning the, the the people of Israel. He was responsible for crimes we cannot imagine, but inside of God Almighty, he committed the worst shirk, uh, which is claiming uh, that he is God himself. And he would, um, and he would uh, invite others to that shirk. He would actually demand on others to recognize him as a God, bow to him, pray to him, and, uh, and think of him as his own God. So there are two people who dealt with Pharaoh very well, and that was his own wife, Asiya, and Musa, his stepson. And how did they do it? All right. So on this uh, mountain Sinai, um, it was only Musa who seen that light, who came up, who thought it will help him and his family because they were journeying on the desert. They didn't know what's going to happen to them. So he thought he saw a light, he will maybe bring it back to his family uh, and help them. He brought light back, and that light was. Uh, actually the advent of his prophethood. He didn't know that. But although he knew very well that he's speaking to God himself, he also knew uh, Nazis. He also knew Pharaoh. He also knew what he can do because he was brought up by him. He was in fear. And that's what, um, I don't want to call people victims, but that's what people who are in relationship with Nazis feel. They feel fear, no questions asked. They feel inferior. And Musa, the moment he heard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to go back, face him, and tell him he's not God. He, he just seen himself dying. So what happened to Musa? He embraced that. He probably thought that he's going to die, but he trusted God. You know, he was chosen prophet. He, he, he managed test after test uh, 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 without a failure. And, and what he'd done, he produced a duwa. He produced a dua which sounds like this. And that dua meant, Oh Lord, expand my breast in feeling courageous because I feel fear, that's what was underlying. Oh Lord, is for me this task, because he thought he's going to die. Oh Lord, and in that moment, it was submission. I don't know if you can guess that, it was submission. It's like, okay, I'm going to die, but just please enable me this journey to be as peaceful and as trustful as possible. And then he said, and united not, uh, and untied the knot from my tongue. So from that um, verse, we know that, uh, he had been scared of how he's going to speak to Narcissus, speak to Pharaoh. Some scholars say that he was stuttering and that do I help him to, um, to speak properly because 
Pharaoh, we know from Quran that he was actually laughing at him at that very meeting. He said, I raise you and grateful. You know, that's, that's uh, kind of God's lightning. This was the first time when we're learning about God's lightning. I raise you and you and grateful. You've killed and I gave you life. Uh, you didn't went through punishment. And you even stutter. Do you think I'm the Lord going to listen to you who's stuttering, right? And in that very beautiful dua, uh, uh, Musa also asked for, for help, not with his speech, but with his task. And what Allah gave him, what he gave him, this is important for all of us who deal with narcissism. He gave him support. He gave a prophethood to his brother on the spot, Harun, Min Aaron. He became a prophet. So Musa didn't have to go alone and face narcissism, but he actually went in the company right not only angels as i can imagine but also a human company the best company you know a brother and that's these are the lessons for those of us who are uh, dealing with narcissists and uh, narcissism uh, with pharaohs yeah of today uh, you need to equip yourself in an environment of support meaning you have to talk talk to god but also maybe talk to therapists and talk to people who actually wish you well. You know, it's not good enough to go around and say, I do this or the other and it's difficult for me. You actually need to find a platform of people who uh, have your best interests in their heart. So, so that's how you deal with nuts. And if you are in a relationship, if you are a wife or if you are a husband and you don't know how to, how to deal with it by yourself, then in, accordingly to Sharia, we have another level, which is involving parties from your family. And if they fail, then involving specialists. And that will include therapists and trained imams. I've stopped there because not every imam is trained in a therapy. Um, and that's not a vague statement. Uh, we all know that it's not as easy. Uh, so, uh, so this is how uh, how to deal with your uh, narcissists in uh, in your personal relationship, um, just like Musa did, and and tap into those layers of involvement, meaning surround yourself with a circle of support. But um, sometimes, sometimes it's uh, it's still. Uh, impossible to stay in this relationship and the reason why i emphasize stay in this relationship stay in this relationship is because uh, what i've learned from work with asian communities not only muslim communities but asian communities is that this uh, this uh, culture is different to eurocentric if you listen to a therapist who is eurocentric who is brought up on the west and who has individual approach to therapy uh, he will normally say this is toxic relationship you need out simple as that because it destroys you now if you are brought up in a, a communal uh, approach to life and you have communal approach to therapies just like i'm trying to uh, to uh, to present you this view you will say sometimes it's impossible because of your values because of your religion because of the family pressure to get out from that relationship and sometimes you love this person you see the potential in this person you have children you don't have finances you don't want to start your life again sometimes it's impossible so how to deal with it and this this uh this those questions those dilemmas are answered by asiya asiya was the wife of the narcissist asiya was the wife of the pharaoh and what did she do she done two things she decided not to invest 90 percent of her hopes of her time of her energy in this relationship she fell in love in her son stepson um, in her adopted son which is Musa so she became a mother but she also fell in love in spirituality she listened to what he said she was the one of the first ones who accepted the message of Islam from Musa she invested in herself. Do you remember that triangle? God, you, the rest. So she'd done the rest, she'd done herself, and then she connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is my message to you today. 
Now, this is what I presented. Uh, I've, I've sort of took you through the journey of how, where narcissists started, how it become to be such a popular thing to talk in our uh, pop culture right now, and how we should conceptualize it from Islamic or monotheistic uh, counseling and psychotherapy perspective. Thank you all for taking part, uh, for asking me those questions. Let me check if you have any more questions. If you don't, if you're re-watching, Please engage with me on Facebook. You are most welcome. I'm going to finish now. Thank you all for watching. If you have any other interest in mental health and you want me to explain that to you from uh, Islamic counseling or spiritual counseling perspective, you are most welcome. I'm looking forward to hear from you. Assalamu alaikum.